Let's do a brief walk around on the hardware. Here's our Raspberry Pi over here. I've got the power connected to the 5 volt pin. That's pin 2. And then I've got the ground and the yellow pin. Yellow pin's 13. Um, and so I believe the ground is 9 if I recall correctly, but you can use any ground. The ground wire comes over here to one side of our voltage divider and this side, of the, uh, this side of the voltage divider also connects to the ground on our flow meter. Go through the resistor. This yellow wire goes back to the Pi. It's our input to line 13, pin 13. And then it goes through our 4.7K resistor. And this yellow wire is the Hall Effect switch on the sensor. And that's pretty much it for our divider. Let's go look at our plug. Our plug, our, hall, our uh, sensor has black, yellow, and red wires, and I'm using the same color scheme. The red wire is the 5 volts from the Pi. The yellow wire is to the voltage divider, and the black wire is just over here to the ground. So let's follow this back over here. This is our flow sensor. It's the YFS201. It's got a working range of 1 to 30 liters per minute. And you can see the impeller inside there. And it's rather simple. It's got an arrow on it which tells you which way the water flows. The water comes in from the left side, goes to the right side, spins the impeller. There's a little magnet on the impeller. The magnet triggers the Hall effect switch. And that causes pulses to come back to the Pi. We count the pi, we count the pulses, we take the time, and we know how many liters per minute, and if we count the total number of pulses, then of course we get the total liters. Okay, well that's it for the hardware setup. Uh, let's go look at the software and see how this works. Let's look at the software behind this. It's relatively simple, it's just a couple screens of code, and a lot of it's uh, comments. So Python 3 program for the YFS201 flow meter and I'm going to use polling. I've got another version that uses interrupts. This uses nested whiles. I've seen people use for loops and try to time it by using sleep and all that. And yeah, that, that causes the program to change uh, speed and you have to change constants and all that depending on what your program is doing. So any little change you have to retune your program, which yeah, I don't like that. So I'm going to use the clock, the internal clock instead. Uh, input on pin 13, pin 6 is ground uh, 5 volts. I've tried it on 3.3, it seems to work, but I get more noise. However, with 5 volts, you must use a voltage divider. Uh, this is a quick comment about the voltage divider, I'll show you that later. And there's a warning here there's no stop flow warning. So if you, like for example, these, all these zeros indicate that the impeller is not turning. If you get all ones, what I found is that you get erroneous readings. I've tried many ways to stop it, but I can't. There's a apparently a bug in the RPI code. I found something online about that. Okay, on to, we're onward. Uh, import the GPIO library. Okay, we know about that. Import time and sys. We want sys for uh, getting out of the program nicely, and we want time so we have a real-time clock. We're going to use board numbering. I know a lot of people prefer the other, but I use board numbering. The input pin is going to be pin number 13. I'm going to assign that pin 13 as in. These are some variables I need. This is the number of pulses per minute, so I'm going to reset this every time I go around in the loop. This is the total number of pulses, and I'm not going to reset that. That's the total from the beginning of the program until the end. Total number of minutes the program has been running. This is a constant, and this constant, in my case, is very approximate. You, to get a good answer, you need to take your flow meter, hook it up to some water, run the water into, a, say, a five-gallon bucket, and time with a stopwatch how long it takes to fill that five-gallon bucket, and then you'll have your constant. And this is a new time because I'm using, I'm saving the old and new times so I can tell when one minute has passed. And we'll look at the code down here farther. These are just comments to the user about what this is doing. This is water flow. It's approximate. It's not accurate because of some of the issues we've discussed. Uh, control C will exit nicely. We'll show you the code down here farther for that. And let's scroll down a couple more lines. 
And here's the whole program really from here to here. There's just two nested while loops, one here and one here. And then a little bit of logic and some printout and that's it. So this is just a loop forever statement while true. And the first thing we're going to do is grab the time. And we're going to have, we have to keep the old time and the new time so we know that when one minute has elapsed. And we're going to use that down here in the second while loop. The rate counter we're going to set to zero and that's the one that we're keeping pulses per minute. So we have to reset that every time. We're not resetting the total count because we want to keep that as long as the program is running. Uh, so here we're checking to see if the old time and the new time are different by more than a minute. If it's more than a minute it will go on to the next. It will jump out, come back up here and reset. So this is my one minute loop inside here if you will. If the input is not equal to zero, in other words it's one, I'm going to increment both of my counters. So the impeller's gone by, it's triggered the Hall effect and I add one to each one. And here is a statement which all it does is it prints these zeros and you'll see ones also when it's running. The zeros and ones just tell you that the impeller is turning. And so this, all these zeros tell me the impeller has stopped. And the Hall effect switch is not triggered at that point. So that's all that print statement is doing. Uh, except if you hit the control C, what will happen is this will exit nicely. It will do the GPIO cleanup. It will tell you it's exiting nicely. It will do the GPIO cleanup. It will do the sys exit and exit nicely. If you do not do that, it will come down here. It will increment the total number of minutes. It will print the liters per minute, the total liters, and the time. And then it will start back up here again and uh, do a new minute and keep the old totals and just keep rolling around and around and around forever. Let's take a look and see how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plastic tube and I'm going to blow into the to the uh, sensor because it's not a good idea to, for me to be running water in the TV room. My wife will have me shot. So uh, I will cheat a little bit. I'm going to do another cheat also as I've set the time. See that 10 over there? It should be 60 for one minute, but I don't want to sit here for one minute and watch this thing scroll by. So I've cheated a little bit. It's been set to 10 seconds, so we'll get a new reading every 10 seconds. But in normal, real life, I would change that 10 to a 60. Okay, let's run it. You can see the impeller is turning. I'm blowing air into it. And the zero indicates that the impeller has stopped. So we got 12.1 liters per minute and a total of 12.1 liters. So this time we got uh, 4 liters added that on to the old one. We got 16.1 and it will just continue to do this. Okay, so this time we got 48.9, 65 total, uh, third minute, the date. Uh, this time we got 9.8 per minute, uh, 74.8 total, we're into the fourth minute, there's the clock, and so on and so on. Of course we could write that out to a file and save that. Okay, well that's it for the flow meter sensor. Hope you found it useful and interesting in your RPI programming.